Welcome, let's start with class 7, 7 chapter where we'll be talking about weather, climate and various adaptations to the climatic conditions. In the class 6 previously, we have talked about the various climatic adaptations for plants and animals. This would be a continuation of the same topic. Now before we start with the adaptations, let's, let's first understand the basic difference between weather and climate. So when we say weather, it's a kind of day-to-day -day changing phenomena. I can say the weather today is pleasant, the weather tomorrow is forecasted to be sunny and so on and so forth. So that means this is a kind of day-to-day -day phenomena that keeps on changing. However, when we talk about climate, it's basically an average and this average is taken over a period of let's say 20 to 30 years which is taken as an average we consider around 25 years to be the average for the same now this climate when i say the weather is usually dry in this region so when i keep on saying this is dry in this region over a period of time, it would be established that certain parts in India, for example, the desert area is an arid area. So we can say the climate here is arid. We can say the climate of the northeast India is wet and so on and so forth. So a very simple difference between the two, the weather and the climate is weather is a day to day phenomena. However, Climate is an average taken over with a span of around 20 to 30 years and then we decide what kind of climate is actually existing in that region. This weather conditions are monitored by the meteorological department. Now these meteorological department are governed by the uh, various bodies of the government. So in India, it's the Indian meteorological department which we say is IMD and this IMD forecasts about the day-to-day -day happenings when we consider weather we consider three elements of weather the first element is temperature the second element is humidity and the third element here is rainfall so we have temperature humidity and rainfall which are the three basic elements which govern the weather conditions this temperature could be measured as maximum temperature or minimum temperature we use thermometers to measure the same. So we have maximum and minimum thermometers what they are named as which we have talked about in chapter 4. Then we have the humidity. This is the amount of moisture that exists in the atmosphere and rainfall is the amount of precipitation, uh, one form of precipitation which is rainfall and this is measured by an instrument which is known as rain gauge. So under rain gauge what you have is you have the total rainfall during a day or during a night period that is being accumulated and the measurement is taken in the uh, gauge so it has the markings and you measure overnight this much was the amount of rainfall that took place or this much was the amount of rainfall that took place around a period of 24 hours so that's how we measure the rainfall and temperature conditions so that's the basic uh, thing that we need to understand here now comes the climate and adaptations so we would be talking about two regions today so if we look on to the globe we have the tropical belt which is closer to the equator and the other belt which is the polar belt so you have some animals which are lying onto the polar area the other animals which are lying onto the tropical area definitely the adaptations for these two regions would vary now let's first focus on this polar area so this polar area is usually snow covered when we say it's snow covered what happens is camouflage is a very important aspect you can see penguins you can see snow leopards you can see polar bears all of these try to adopt themselves or have a color similar to the snow so a color closer to white is what is preferred and this is because they are trying to camouflage themselves in order to avoid the attack of other animals so the first thing for the polar region animals the simplest one we take an example is the polar bear so polar bear you have a camouflage that's the first point under adaptation the second point under adaptation would be a thick layer of fat that is present under the skin this thick layer of fat prevents 
the animal from getting extremely cold. So because it's a polar area, a snow capped area, what's important is to maintain the body temperature and this could be done by a thick layer of fat that is there which acts as an insulator and because of which the animal is able to maintain the temperature. Again, these animals move very very slowly. Why they do so? They are trying to conserve the heat and the energy with them in order to have a more uh, in order to have more warmth. So that's why these animals usually move very very slowly. The next is in this area the animals like polar bear for example has two layer of fur. So the outer layer and uh, inner layer this layer of fur again protects them from the cold wind from the strong cold that's there. So again acts as an insulator as well as protection from the strong winds that is there. This polar region usually we say witnesses a six months of day and six months of night. So from equator as we move towards the pole you have six months of days and six months of nights in contrast to the equatorial region where you have equal day and equal night which is witnessed. Now when you have six months of day and six months of night you would have severe cold conditions during those six months of nights what we say that's an extreme cold condition. So this weather phenomena is to be adjusted to the animals for the animals they have this phenomena but what about the birds so birds here usually are migratory birds what does this mean this means that when you have a cold season that starts these birds have the sense to move towards the lower latitudes that's basically towards the equatorial side or the tropical region in order to avoid the severe cold winters now we, you might have heard examples of Siberian cranes visiting the Bharatpur region, visiting the Sultanpur region in Haryana, the Bharatpur region in Rajasthan. Why does this occur? That every time these Siberian cranes land on to the same region. So that's because they have a very strong sense of direction and again they are able to direct themselves as per the earth's magnetic field. So those are the two primary reasons that they are able to maintain the same path every year. So every time when we have winters we expect these migratory birds, the waterfowls, you have the Siberian cranes and other migratory birds to visit the country and the various parts where they often visit. So those are some of the classic characteristics of the polar animals. Similarly, another polar animal is penguin. So penguin, again, you have camouflage, the white merges. Then you have a fat layer, uh, which is basically acting as an insulator, which is also known as blubbers uh, in the case of whales and the fishes. These penguins are really, really good swimmers. So again, they have adaptations for swimming. They have a streamlined body to adopt for the swimming purpose and again they have webbed fit because of the webbed fit they are considered a very apt creature for swimming activities now this was about the polar area coming on to the tropical area the tropical area animals are a bit different tropical area you have a very strong competition for food again the another important thing for a tropical animal is they have to have a loud voice very sharp patterns of voice very sharp uh, vision strong beaks a diet which is full of fruits and vegetables because you would see ample of trees and ample of vegetation in this area this tropical area accounts for around six percent of the uh, total area with Half of the animal life that exists in this region and nearly two-third of the plant life that exists in this region. Some of the common species that are seen are red-eyed frog. These red-eyed frogs have sticky uh, feet. So what they do is they can climb the trees and stick to the trees. So that's one of the very simple adaptations that explains. Similarly, monkeys have a long grasping tail. So they are, uh, they have a kind of prehensile tail. So they can have that tail movement with the direction of the flight. And again, they can move from one, to, uh, one tree to another. They are arboreal creatures that are seen. Uh, days and nights, as we said, are equal in the tropical area. 
tropical area is known for variety so as we said half of the animal life and nearly two third of the plant life exist in this region so you have numerous variety of reptiles mammals and amphibians that are seen in this region token is another one of the important birds this has a very long and a large beak that is seen this the classic idea is that this bird if sits on the tree can uh, take the branch down so rather than sitting on the tree it just puts, puts its beak and takes the fruit or takes the nectar from the food so that's how uh, it's hard to support the weight of the bird because of the large body built up of the bird they can simply reach through the beak to the branch they want and have their food you have big cats that are seen which are mainly the lions and the tigers in this region again they have very sensitive hearing they can detect their prey only by the means of hearing capacity commonly seen in the rainforest area so rainforest of western guards then you have the parts of northeast india where you have these creatures which are seen in abundance you have elephant which is a very common creature which is seen with a trunk and the tusk this tusk is basically used or is a kind of modified teeth for which poaching of uh, elephants is being done uh, elephants can tear the bark they have very large ears the idea is to absorb maximum sound and because of the sound they are aware of the upcoming threat uh, that they can have so those are some of the modifications or rather i could say adaptations that these animals have in the tropical area as well as the polar area the other adaptations we have already covered in class 6 we'll be covering more similar and interesting topics in the upcoming lecture so stay tuned have a very great day ahead